Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today is Friday, November 13th. Thank God it's Pod Day and welcome to episode 34 of the Can't Stop Playing Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Gostrobo, and joining me, as always, from deep south Texas, he, he requested a specific name for this intro. We have, <laughs> we have Daisy joining us. <laughs> Zach, be careful. Jason's behind you. Jason? Friday the 13th. Oh, today is Friday the 13th. That's a lucky day for me. I was born... Uh, on December 13th, I turned 13 on Friday the 13th, so I feel like if if anything crazy is going to happen, it's going to happen you're, to me. You're neglecting the fact that Jason is still behind you. Is he? Yeah. Ah, he okay, should be. Got you. Speaking, okay. of, speaking of Jays, we do have a, a new special guest today. JD from the YouTube channel Run JD Run is here gracing Yo. us with his glorious presence. What up? How's everybody doing? That Friday the 13th thing, that's kind of creepy. It's kind of like, I feel like you're the carry baby or something. Yeah. He, he, he's the omen. Uh, <laughs> the <thanks>. omen. <laughs> I did, like, if we want to get real personal here, my mom almost died giving birth to me. Uh, oh, God. I, on, on, on December 13th, her heart rate started dropping. My heart rate started dropping. So A they dark had to, turn. <laughs> emergency c-section to withdraw my devious self and, and then the baby had a 666 on his wrist we don't right. know why yeah. <laughs> if, if i you, met your i met your mom recently i'm glad she she didn't pass away while having you she's awesome i'm, I'm glad too it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real good thing uh and this has That's been a really good funny. week for games black ops 3 <laughs> fallout 4 that rise one. of the tomb raider and now yep. Battlefront, uh, which I, I find that release to be the weirdest of all, because it's just sort of like there with with no fanfare because the well, EA access not, thing. It's not out, yeah. I know, but it, it, like it's out, but it's not out. Um, so we'll touch on all of those uh, before we do. I got to ask: Are either of you having issues with the the daylight savings time adjustment? No. Yeah, I... maybe a little bit. It gets super dark out here on the West Coast when like, it's like fast. Like, Five thirty. Yeah. I feel like it's like one a.m. and I'm ready for bed. Zero, gotta, zero desire to do much of anything. You're forgetting one thing, Zach. I don't sleep, That's so right. no, it doesn't affect me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's dark by like five over here. Yeah, it's if, terrible. If anyone's evil, I think it would be you, Gabe. You don't sleep. You drink true. like a ton of water to feed your. <laughs> that is that is true. Violent habits to, to nurture the beast. Exactly. This is all true. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, today's episode is brought to you by Amiibo. There's oh man! A, a whole lot of a whole <laughs> lot of new ones that came out today. They're all cute and cuddly. Did yours get sent to your house? No, I went to Toys R Us this morning and. Ah, uh, I thought I was like sitting back looking at yours, like why aren't mine in my house yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. It is. It is nice though. Like the whole, maybe, maybe Nintendo just wisened up, but there's none of that like lining up rush anymore. I just walked in, picked them all up. No hassle. No issues. There's still a shortage, right? Like there's these... a shortage on West Coast. I know that. Yeah. It's always short over here. I don't we think there's the... an abundance of them out there. We at get all. the we get the back end of that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Indiana just is uh not a whole lot of Nintendo lovers out here. <laughs> but Nintendo wise I was expecting from that direct yesterday some like big bold new announcement. I know you guys were both happy about it. Wait, 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 but why? Because be, it, it, it's a Nintendo Direct, like just out of nowhere. Like, but, yeah, we knew like, about do it. Do you for read the way. NeoGaf threads? Every time one of these happens, there's like that, like hope that maybe this is the one where Nintendo becomes. Hey, this what? was the one. <laughs> this was the one. Okay, Zach. I, Zach. I don't know. Th this one was pretty, like, uh, really decent. But I think I was kind of in the same boat as Zach. I was like watching it, and I don't think I got really hyped until. Either it was like right at the end or like a little bit before the end. I can't even remember what they announced, but I think yeah, they were, <laughs> great they were, slant. It, I forgot <laughs> there was something. No, you know what? I got hyped for Amiibo. That literally yeah, was the thing. Go. That was the oh. first thing that made me say, "God damn it, my wallet!" You know, like yeah. I just <laughs> like I sat back and saw that there are new like Animal Crossing ones. Um, that Twilight Princess remake thing, even though that thing... That gets that me. Thing, that, that thing, I'm sorry, that thing looks atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so bad. It looks the exact same as Nintendo Wii. Like, it doesn't look like they changed the graphics at all. And that sucks. 
But Maybe yeah, we got to show you screenshots like like we showed Zachary screenshots earlier, and he finally admitted that Fallout Three does not look the same as Fallout Four. I, See, but the the Nintendo Direct thing, Zachary. Let, let me talk about that very quickly. JD doesn't know. I have a, a Triforce tattoo on, on me, so anytime something new Zelda related comes, I'm happy. So e- yeah. even if even if it was just a remake of a you know of a GameCube game, because it is the GameCube version that's being remade, I'm yeah. happy with that. Plus, we saw like nine seconds of Epona. You know that was cool for the Wii U version. It's super. Link weird. had a and, hood on. Yeah, it, I don't know why Nintendo does that. Like, it's so ridiculous. But whatever. Cloud though, Cloud. Is yeah, that... that was that was the real kicker. Yeah, man, but... he, he had his Buster Sword. He, he he was doing limit breaks all over the place. We saw a whole bunch of summons. Like, it's crazy. I think he was a pre-planned character. I don't know, cause that's what I thought. You know what? That's what um. Because I've watched, I've watched some people who talk talked about how they said that we we're going to get one of the voting poll characters, and he makes sense to me as a voting poll character. But I mean, if he was pre-planned, then I don't know. Nintendo's just shaking a lot of hands lately. He's they've just been going around to all the different companies like, please let us borrow characters. You know, that's, <laughs> like, what, that's what they need to do. I mean, they have a console coming out presumably in the next couple of years, yeah. so they need to get in the, in the good graces of all these companies, and you know have these big games coming so final fantasy 7 remake being on nx that would be a big deal for a lot of people especially because that's you know a a sony exclusive yeah that's true are we getting we're getting a next next year huh i I don't that's what zach says i don't i don't think so no i think think, well i mean they did say that zelda um you know well no that's zelda wii u not nx yeah uh i don't know i i don't i i just don't see how that comes out next fall when dev units were just sent out a couple of months ago like these people have no time and, and it's gonna be a weird console it's not like this is gonna be traditional controls and, or, and yeah we know nintendo's not doing a traditional console so for dev units to be sent out a couple of months ago there's no way that these things are gonna be ready then it's doomed just like the wii u because that was the wii u. the wii u's main problem is that it has no third-party support no games are coming to that thing Yeah, okay, but remember, Assassin's, <laughs> Assassin's Creed, Batman, and a few others were Wii U launch titles. So having, you know, three or four launch titles that are, you know, third party, that's not, you know, third party support. There needs to be some type of parity as far as uh, graphics go. They, 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 need to, they, need, they need to be very similar. They need to be, they need to be better than what we've got now straight up like i can't do enough i mean i'm gonna obviously get a nintendo system because i'm a nintendo fan but they need to stop playing with their fan base by being cheap you know like or i don't know what it is what are they doing are they cutting costs or are they just like we don't want anybody to enjoy other games except nintendo games like what is their i don't get their deal like i'm not against their motto but it's just weird well it's not it's not working for them it, it, it's a control. It, like they go a little too fringy. They do something that's a little just too out. And nobody wants to develop games for this control. Like it's a weird controller. Nobody wants to, you know, have t- damn near mandatory touchpad stuff. Like eh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they got to go a little bit yeah. more traditional. I th- yeah, I think they're they're Nintendo's problem ever since the Wii is just they want to be too innovative, just a little bit. A little bit too ahead of the curve. Like, no, we're doing the future. And it's like, well, yeah, but in doing the future, you're setting yourself back like five years, which is annoying as hell. So how about you just, you know, relax and make the stuff that you're you're really good at and then, you know, just have people play it. But, uh, yeah, because I remember buying the Wii U and the whole – or I didn't even no, – I, I don't remember. I got the Wii U and I was just sitting back like, when Smash coming? You know, like that's all I could think. <laughs> you waited a while. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know, Zachary. I don't think if, I don't think the index comes next year. I think is, Zach is he, froze. Is he alive? He froze in space and time. Yeah, here I'll text him. You can keep talking. Do you have anything else to say? <laughs> all right, guys. So on the subject of Nintendo, I want all your amiibo. If you yeah. got any, <laughs> forward them to my PO box. It'll be in the link below on yeah. my channel. <laughs> that and people were saying, "Why don't you guys get a girl on the podcast?" We just had a girl on the podcast. Oh yeah. Did you notice? I'm sure you noticed. 
So there you guys <laughs> go. People people always say we need to get a female in here. A female was yeah. in here for like two seconds. Perfect. You know, you know the only problem I have. Uh, I, I mean, I guess you guys will still have my audio for this, but the only problem I really have with Nintendo and this whole Zelda thing is, like, I'm glad they got Twilight Princess coming, but, yo, like, what? I, I, I And I'm glad there's a new Zelda coming, you know, regardless of whatever, but I, I don't like that they sold us on that fantasy Zelda like three or four E threes ago, where you were doing the tech demo with the yeah. Wii U gamepad. Yeah, but they were upfront that that was just a tech demo. I don't think that there was any. Yeah, uh, they but, never said like you know this is the next Zelda. Like they, no, they were... but they made it. They played it off like, what if this was the next Zelda? And I was like, <laughs> hell yeah, this shit looks great. Yeah, so what if it is? And it's not. But it, <laughs> and it's definitely not. Like yeah. I've seen because like I mean, and I'm not against the new Zelda look because honestly, it looks like. It looks like regular Link in Wind Waker fashion, so I'm not a mad, I'm not mad at that because I like cell shaded games and I liked Wind Waker a lot, but I don't know. I feel like they just sold us on a fantasy. What the hell was that? Yeah, I mean, how many times has Nintendo done that though? When, when the Wii U was coming out, they they, they soar up and down. They had third party support this time, and it was going to be very yeah. different. They were going back to the hardcore audience. That lasted for all of what like three months. We got Zombie U at launch and. A yeah, couple, a couple of other things right after that, but um, that was pretty much it. Zach texted me; he, he's coming right back. His computer just crashed. Um, oh, yeah. I saw that Nintendo talk. He, his computer heard him. He's like, <laughs> it's "You Friday did talk th- Friday the thirteenth. It's the bad you luck. You did talk bad about Nintendo boy." <laughs> um, but no, I'm looking at like the uh, I'm looking at the graphics of like the new 2016 quote unquote Zelda, and it looks good. I, I think it looks even more appealing to me because. I feel like when it comes to like real hardcore graphics, Nintendo never really puts in the work, except for Smash Brothers. That's the one game where they really put the detail into the characters. Like that Mar- Fal- Mar- Mario Kart is the other one. It, there, there's pretty good detail on that. There is, but if you do four players, it gets freaking pixelated as crap. <laughs> but oh, you mean like four players on one screen? Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, just saying, I, I mean, no, Mario that. Kart is very detailed. I mean, detail in the sense of, you know how, like, like regular, uh, you know, PS4 to Xbox One games look, where, where, like, they're trying to sell you on graphic fidelity, and Nintendo's not. Like, they might have the power to make, like, Mario look as realistic as possible, but they'll never make him look like it's an Unreal Engine, because that would be weird for them, you know? So they make him look like, oh, he's Mario, and he's just HD Mario with, like, some really cool-looking, I don't know, like, maybe pants. He has better plumbing pants now. But um, he's they never make him look like how, you know, like how the progression of graphics try to look. They, and they, they can't. No, I mean, they can't, but then again, the tech demo Zelda, to me, looked like that. That looked like... Nintendo saying, "Oh, this is our new console, new graphics. Check out this like, you know, ridiculous new-looking Zelda." But now they backpedaled and said, "Oh, just kidding. He cell shaded cuz that's easier for us and we did Wind Waker, so we know you'll like it." I don't know. Yeah. Zach, so, you're back. <laughs> everybody let us well, everybody let us know what you think about the possibility of the NX coming next year and what you think about the Nintendo Direct. Um, in the comments, I am back. Friday the 13th clearly struck me silly because that's I the first time you. I've ever had a crash. He was behind you and he cut your podcast. internet cords. Yeah, he pro- clearly you, did. Uh, everything, <laughs> uh, there was just this like instant like, zzz, like everything was like humming in my headphones. It was pretty horrible. <laughs> um, you started dissing your birth date and they were like, F that. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Came it got after you. Real fearful for a few moments there. I wanted to backtrack before we get to Fallout and just uh, let people know how, JD, how you and I met. So that they don't just be like, who's this random guy that? Oh yeah, that, that popped up. Should on, have done uh, that at the beginning of the show. Oh, okay, well we're a little. <laughs> <laughs> that that Nintendo conference was so mind blowing. It just it encaps it like totally enraptured us. Uh, yeah, anyway, right. so we we actually met at a Nintendo event. See, Gabe, this is perfect. It all it all works out great. Yeah, I was playing some Super Mario Maker, lonely by myself, didn't really know anybody there, <laughs> and over walks the charming JD, and uh, you you knew me, I didn't know you. And, no, uh, yeah. I mean, I had known you through a mutual friend because yes. I know we both know Lamar Wilson. 
Right. So I knew him, and obviously I I had seen your stuff before, so it was like one of those things where I just was like, hey, man, I watch your videos and also know a friend of yours, and also you have on some really cool shoes. I think you had some Kevin Durant's on or something or Kobe's. I had the the Kobe uh, Chester's, the ones from his high school rival. Yeah. (laughs) And then we started talking about basketball, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant. Yep. And uh, then – then we went on a boat and we had like a beautiful Titanic moment and the rest is the rest is <laughs> did you actually, go on, did you actually go on a boat? I no, I wish. <laughs> okay. I wish. I think uh I think I went back to the hotel and fell asleep and went to VidCon VidCon. Yeah, I think it was VidCon. That's what VidCon. it was. Yeah. And then watched all the teen girls run around with their heads chopped off or whatever. To be did. clear, I don't know J D at all. I met him once. And it was super briefly <laughs> in, a, in a hall in PAX somewhere. That's true. We did meet at PAX yeah. as well. Oh, I yeah, with, yeah. I, I was with Zach. And yeah. I met, yeah, yeah. So we there were we at go. PAX and just ran into each other and said hi and said bye because that's what real friends do. Yeah. They don't yeah. ever sit back and no. get to know one another. <laughs> no. we're, we're, we're too busy for that. We got amiibos to find, games to play. <laughs> And uh, to no, Hollywood for that, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> JD's a fantastic guy and may soon be a neighbor of some sort uh, in 2016, which would be pretty sweet. So, uh, back on the game. Just stop divulging so much information. Oh, yeah, because me moving to California hasn't been said like a, a billion times in this well, podcast. Well, stop saying it. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, back to games. F- Fallout, it came out. It's pretty good. All right, Star Wars Battlefront. Um, Is that out? out? It's out for EA Access. Um, you can yeah. play. Ten, you can play ten hours of it. How or long is that lasting? T- um, all the way till Tuesday. Oh, really? Till- They're doing the EA Access till it's out. Yeah, no, but you have ten hours of it with your account. Okay. But if you have a separate account with oh, EA Access, you have to count it up. On, okay. on a, yeah, on a separate console. Yeah, you just go. Got it. Play ten more hours. That's what I'm doing. Oh, uh, okay. No, but we're we're actually gonna talk about Fallout, Zachary. Okay. Let's talk about Fallout. Let's talk about Fallout. I love a, Fallout. See, I don't even want to hear from you first. I want to, I <laughs> okay. want to hear from JD first because Thanks. he's this Gabe, is his first Gabe, Fallout. Thirty seconds ago, you said you've never met the guy, and now you're I, squeezing I, me straight out of the conversation. No, no, Zachary. <laughs> Zachary, you know where my heart truly lies. But JD's never played Fallout before, so no. I'm, inter- I'm interested. How, how much of this have you played? Uh, you know what? I haven't played enough to really even give it an honest opinion. I should probably play right now in the background and be like, yeah, okay, I'm liking this, I'm liking that, you know, because uh, I got through the beginning, and I mean, story-wise, I like how it started. It very, It's very, you know, uh, enveloping. It gets you, grabs you, and a little, and whatnot with the storyline. Um, I mean, I feel like it's going to be one of those games that I'll spend a lot of hours on based upon just how much time I spent looking around on my own in the beginning and just getting lost within the world of it. I feel like the story is going to, I mean, I think the story doesn't even really matter. I think it's just like, oh, this is going to be a game that I'm going to spend years on if I have it. So yeah. 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 Uh, Did you enjoy what you played? Uh, I mean, it's hard because it's your first fault. So it had to be a little overbearing just to, you know, Starting your character out, specking it out, get, um, the skill points on, on your special um, thing, get your your attributes. You had to spec a character out, and, and I don't know how how many RPGs you play. Like, yeah, I mean, I play a few, but I, you know, I, I mean, I feel like I feel like I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, I feel like I need to play it more to understand Fallout's whole thing, but. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed it. I got a chance to, like, really, I guess, I guess make my character better a little bit in the beginning. And, you know, the, it, I think the, I think that, like, with time, he'll get better and I'll have more fun. I, I think it's just, I think it's one of those things where I really need to sit back and just enjoy the game for myself and not just, like, I don't know, make a video about it and put it on the internet. Mm-hmm. I think I need to just sit back, play it for a few hours on my own, and then after, like, updating my character getting farther in the game maybe then come back and make a video and be like hey so now i get this game yeah, yeah. here's how i feel about it <laughs> yeah yeah super fair zachary yes what's up, Gabe. What's up? I how, really much like- you lo- how much do you love fallout how i much? really 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 like it i think experience wise it's freaking fantastic how I much take- do you love how much do you love fallout 
on a, <laughs> on, a, on a scale of what's the scale here? Give me a, a sliding scale. One heart to twenty rainbows. I, I would give it a fair eighteen rainbows. See, so <sighs> that's too many rainbows. That's too, many, too many <laughs> rainbows. That's not enough rainbows. <laughs> My issue right. with Fallout is not that it's fun, not that it's awesome. My issue is that for a game that's you know, seven years after its predecessor, I don't feel like there's eno- enough improvements, but it's not even an issue. I-, I don't want to frame it that way. I really like the game. I think it starts super interesting and exciting. I like that it's a parent simulator. You get to be a mom or a dad, even though after the first half hour, that's kind of forgotten. Um, Come I- back. I-, I think it like, I think it climbs a roller coaster hill as you're, you're freezed or frozen down in the-, the vault and then you come out and then I think it, Definitely takes a dip when you have to deal with Preston Garvey and his six-hour walk to Sanctuary. Uh, but after that, like it, it's been fantastic. It's not. It's like a five-minute walk. <laughs> okay, I, I don't care what you say. In 2015, game design should not be wait for this guy to walk to to the town to start the quest. Absolutely you have, absurd. You have the option to not wait at all. Well, I had to wait. There was no other quest to do. <laughs> Zach, there's a, there's a million things to do anywhere on the map that you see. You can go. Yeah, but what if I didn't want to go? What if I wanted to complete oh, no, the quest hard. in the area? That's he didn't take six hours to go, Zach. Okay, so he took four. So after his four hours of walking <laughs> there, the game gets really good. And, like, I love the point I'm at right now. Uh, I'm making my way towards Diamond City. I've gotten distracted by a million other quests. I think it, it hits its sweet spot um, after about, you know, two hours or so of gameplay, three hours of gameplay. More, more. After about, like... 10 hours well, for, from where I'm at right now in about hour six or seven, I feel like it's in its sweet spot where you're, you're doing the fallout thing of exploring all these interesting buildings, collecting a bunch of stuff, managing your inventory, leveling up your character consistently and kind of getting into the nitty gritty of, of combat and just like the, the, the loop of, okay, explore an area, collect all the good stuff, find something cool, move on to the next. It is interesting to me how like the setup for the game and the structure of what, like the actual game designers like put in there means very little. It's almost entirely your experience and your creation of where you're going to go, what you're going to do, because they start the game off and JD, I don't know how you feel being, having this been your first fallout. Like you might feel like this is going to be a really like action packed story of, Oh my God, your baby's stolen, blah, blah, blah. And then like mom gets a little bit of Alzheimer's and forgets she has a child and goes out and, you know, kills these ghouls and helps out, you know, people at a supermarket and, deals with a whole lot of other stuff and and quickly that structure just sort of falls to the wayside not not in a bad way but just in a way that uh, you got to remember the baby's taken right yes well I, I, story spoilers okay never mind okay because <laughs> the baby's not a baby anymore zach it's not a baby <laughs> yes it is no it's not he was frozen Oh, you know what hold on so don't spoil it for me but because, yeah, the baby was stolen, and then you were cryogenically frozen yes. for 200 more years? No, 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 not 200 more years. It's, it, it, I, I don't know the exact amount, but whenever you... Uh, you're going to see the baby again. That's not a huge spoiler. The baby was taken halfway, maybe, then. Who knows? Yeah, the or baby... Maybe... When you see your, your child again, he's like 10 or 12. So okay. he's it's not like he's still a child. So a lot of time oh. has passed. So the urgency to get your baby, like... You know, all these years already passed. So, yeah. I'm a mom, Gabe. I'm playing a mom. I want my kid. Yeah, but you have no idea where the kid is. Yeah, ha- unless you're interacting with these characters and figuring out like what you're doing. Like, my, how my, do you know where to start? I, well, I started with Preston Garvey, the most boring NPC I've ever <laughs> seen in a video game. <laughs> okay, like all all things aside, I know like I've had a history with like dissing fall. I really love it. I genuinely do. That's that's no you know slight or or sarcasm whatsoever. I really think it's fantastic. I take issue with the fact that the first time I fought the Death Claw, he glitched underneath the concrete. I take issue with the fact that many conversations the subtitles just stop. I take issue with the fact that. I have characters just staring at each other blankly, not saying anything. But if I set that aside, I think my experience of the game, because we're not even here to review it, just experientially, I think it's super fun. And it really, to me, feels like Fallout 3.5. Like, it's a continuation of that. I don't... Personally, yes, there are differences in the systems, but not enough for me to be like, wow, this is a real sequel. I just enjoy the fact that, for me, it's it's a more exciting and... Uh, engaging world than new vegas was so i feel like i'm back on that fallout 3 grind where i wanted to get to the end and i wanted to keep progressing and i wanted to face off against all the enemies um i have had some 
I don't know if I'd say interesting, but it's easy to get sidetracked into sort of the quote wrong area. Gabe, we talked about this early on where I wandered into a supermarket and ended up radiating myself basically to the point of extinction. Um, (laughs) And, and like, but it didn't set me up for failure. Like I was able to recover from that. I eventually got the rat away and, and I'm, I'm clean and, and whole and complete again. Um, and it, it's hard without spo- like to not, if we're not going to spoil stuff, like I don't, you know I, what I mean? I mean, I think we could spoil. I mean, if you want to, I don't care, but yeah, <laughs> you know, how, how much are we even spoiling? This is all like relatively probably early. everybody's different yeah, experiences. Yeah. Anyway. It's like, it's yeah. And that's the other thing. And I think that's where people don't get fallout the credit it deserves because no two people in the world are having the exact same fallout experience. It's almost impossible. Uh, because everybody's specking out their characters differently. Everybody's characters look differently. Everybody's going in, di- in different directions. As soon as you get out there to the wasteland for the first time, you can go wherever you want. If You don't even have to walk towards Preston right away. Like, you can l- just go anywhere, even if you're not supposed to. And, yeah, you might get destroyed rather easily, but you can do it. So, I, I-, I think it's super interesting that millions of people with this one game are having a totally different experience. And it doesn't get the credit for that. It- instead, it's criticized for the bugs which obviously there should be criticism for bugs there shouldn't be as many bugs i haven't had that many the only the the worst thing that's happened to me is that the subtitles have frozen but the characters keep talking Mm. i haven't had that thing where they're staring at each other i haven't had enemies get stuck underground i haven't had any of that stuff happen to me so for for me i i can't i can't fault the game for i know the stuff is out there understandably so but it's so few and far between so if i'm having five hours of an amazing time right and then, oh, there's a glitch for a little while. And then I have, like, three more hours of amazing time. Oh, oh another glitch. To me, in a game that's this big with so many variables and there's so much going on, not that it's excusable, but it's excusable. You know what I mean? My favorite part of the game is uh, I'm not someone who, who spends long sessions gaming. Like, Gabe, you'll, you'll play a game for six hours straight. I just I can't yeah. do that. But Fallout 4 is one where I just want one more quest. I just want one more level. I just want one more... I want to investigate one more room, one more building, and see if maybe there's something super sweet there. And, and a lot of times there is, whether it's an interesting terminal, whether it's some sort of you know bobblehead that you stumble across, whether it's a creepy clapping monkey, which those things are everywhere. Don't really understand why, but they're pretty I awesome. Keep thinking, I keep thinking they're going to blow up. Because yeah, I know. Zombie, yeah, the zombies <laughs> map. So. Yeah, but uh, like that's my, my favorite thing is that, again, that like loop of fun is very... They nail it to a T. You know, you go in, you clear it out, you find cool stuff, you modify your loadout, and you move on. And, and that's where I think they really succeed. I thought it'd be cool, Gabe, especially since you've played so much, to like kind of highlight maybe one or two of your favorite moments. Um, that either you know you talk about different experiences. So, what are one or two things that you've run into uh, that that have sort of defined your first what twenty hours at this point? Yeah, right around there. Okay, so, like. One of the missions, and this one is super like spoilery story wise, so I won't get into specifics. But it's super like psychedelic. Like your literal, the level is someone's brain. Okay, <laughs> it's, so it's Psychonauts. It's, cool. Um, so the, I, the 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 way it reminded me, and I was streaming it over on uh, Twitch, uh, volatile game on there as usual. But um, somebody said, "Hey, does does this not remind you of that Far Cry uh, mission where, where you're all drugged out? I believe mm-hmm. it was Far Cry Three, and that's sort of what it was like. You're, you're literally like walking on this dude's like br- uh, brain wavelengths. Um, hmm. th- again, spoilers as to how you get there and who it is and all of that. But the whole level is literally just black and it's brain, and you're going to someone's memories and you're seeing their memories and you're giving you're getting tidbits of story uh, in that way. So people like. That, that was one of my favorite moments for sure, and, and that, that's why I say it's unfair to say that this game isn't, like, creative and that it's all the same. Like, stuff like that is there, and this is a main story. Everyone's going to have to do it eventually. That's super so, cool. So, one of those, man, finding that the alien gun was, like, really, like, those, uh, there is alien weaponry in the game. There has been before. Fallout 3 and New Vegas both had alien weaponry. So, uh, I've been looking for that. Um, I, I think that the legendary enemies are super neat. The fact that, have you come across any? No. Okay, so uh, for every enemy type, there, um, there's random, randomly generated legendary enemies. They have a little star next to them. Okay. So they're they're extra strong and they have extra like a lot of health, right? And, and it even gets to the point where you like take half its health and the enemy will just mutate and it gets a full bar of health and it's even stronger. Weird. But every one of those enemies, you're incentivized to destroy it because it has a piece of uh, legendary loot on it. So it'll have a let's say it has a shotgun. So 
every piece of legendary loot has a special attribute that no other item has. So let's say I get the shotgun and it does 20% more damage to humans. Mm-hmm. And that's just an attribute specifically to that one gun that you got from one, that one legendary enemy. So every time I see a legendary enemy, I know it's going to be like a tough fight mostly just because, you know, they usually have other enemies with them of the same kind. Let's say you come across a legendary super mutant. He's not the only super mutant you're dealing with. Super mutants are already like hard to deal with as it is. And now you have this like extra one. And what about a legendary bloat fly? That's my most annoying they're, enemy they're in the game. There. They're out there. And those mosquito, the mosquitoes to me are the most annoying. They're out there. Oh, that's and what they, I'm talking about. The ones that like suck on your face. The, the are you talking about the fat ones or, or the skinny ones? The skinny the blo- ones that like latch onto your body. I hate oh, those man. things. Yeah, but um, every time I find a, a, a legendary, um, that sounds super cool. A, a legendary enemy, I do a quick save and I go at it uh, in any way I can. Man, the, the, fat, <laughs> the fat man. It's it, like it's Pokemon. Still, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The fat man is still an amazing gun to use. Obviously, there's not a lot of uh, ammo for it out there, but having a, a mini nuclear blast like in your arms is awesome. Yeah. Um, I do so, wish there was a little more variety in the weaponry and enemies, but like, yeah, really, when you look at like that, the perk chart and the fact that you could spec out, you know, to do all lock picking or all terminal unlocking right from the beginning, have so many more options available to you, or you could ignore that completely. Like, that really is. Very special and, and very unique to kind of like the Bethesda format. Um, my favorite moment so far was I went to the drive-in, as I'm sure you did as well, Gabe. Mm-hmm. And uh, just I was talking about movies, how much I like drive-ins, how much I did as a kid. And then <laughs> mines blew up my legs. Yeah. And I was very what? sad. <laughs> and I was just like slowly but surely, you know, crawling across the drive-in, uh, a broken woman. Because I am playing as a, a mom. Not a I, I I was at first, but I switched. You switched, um, yeah. Like, I, like in game, you're like, no, no. I started no, in you new save file. Start over, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've started the game three times. Uh, different save you're, files. You're I wanted, I wanted person. to see. I wanted to be a complete jerk in one of them and see how like they would react to me. And I wanted to be super nice in one of them, see how they reacted. And how, how do you feel about the dialogue system? The fact that they've kind of gone the way of Mass Effect with like suggestion instead of actually knowing I, what you're saying. I, 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 could, I could be totally wrong here. But it's not that different because in Fallout 3, like, you get to read a, a large chunk of the dialogue before you press the button. Right. Right? Here, I think the, the, the same dialogue, like, the same amount of dialogue is still there. It's just, like, masks. So, like, you don't know what they're going to say ahead of time. It's just a feeling. I just so, run into a few instances where, like, I think she's going to talk about this and instead she's actually being super obnoxious. Or instead she's, you know, inquiring about something totally different. But I do yeah. like it from the standpoint of it feels like it makes the cut scenes or the dialogue scenes more immersive because then you want to find out what they're going to say instead of, like, pre-reading and screening yeah. all of the, the sentences. Yes. I mean, because I, I saw, like, you know, people have issues with it. Th- th- there was a screenshot that said, oh, RPGs in 2008 and RPGs in 2015. And they showed the Fallout 3 with, you know, showing all the dialogue. And mm-hmm. and, and this one, it just shows, like, the, you know, the two words. But that yeah. dialogue is still there. It's just being masked so that you don't pre-read it. Um I, I like the game a lot. And oh, I think it's freaking fantastic. I think it's, again, like a hard game to talk about because like you said, there's not like a whole lot without spoiling major story missions. We can be like, oh, remember that moment because we do have different moments. And one thing I did want to ask you, Gabe, is have you come across like any really impressive set pieces within yes. the main storyline? Okay. Uh, yeah, well, when you join, the, you have an option to join the Brotherhood of Steel. That's not that big. That's not a story. No. So you join the Brotherhood of Steel and one of the, the quest lines for that faction is to... Like you're, I was minding my own business, and then I see this like giant blimp just fly over me, like this giant like mechanical blimp. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell is that? And the giant I, mechanical blimp. A, a couple hours went by, and, and I just never knew what the hell it was. I I heard it announcing, "Oh, Brotherhood of Steel, you know, if you get in the way, you know, you will be met with force crap like that." Um, <laughs> hours passed, and then my the quest giver for 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 um that side of the story, he said, "Oh, we're going over there." The first time you go into that blimp, it's awesome. You're flying on it. You have the minigun. Like, it, it, it's a pretty Can you good jump piece. out of the blimp? I, I don't think you can f- jump. I don't know. Uh, I didn't try. Maybe. I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm running straight out the blimp, seeing if I can fall all the way to you the earth below. You probably could. I didn't try. I knew better to try. I would die. Did you light uh, Paladin Dents on fire? No. Oh. He, he, he's the guy that gives you the quest for that. Yeah, well, there's a... 
Uh, I'm, on, I'm on his good side. As part of the first quest, you can go and turn on this jet engine. The first quest you do with him where you go and oh, explore the yeah, synth yeah, building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. You I did, did try it. Good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I thought, like, He looked so I'm sad. Like, oh. He was just, like, kneeling down there, like, literally scorched with thousands of degrees of heat. And I was just, yeah. I felt bad for him. Yeah. Um, synthetics are, are, are much more, like, a part of this game than in past games. I, I'm pretty sure there were synthetics in Fallout 3. I remember them being around. So I think I it is think interesting that that's kind of like the focal point that, and, and that was masked for most of the, like the early coverage of the game until the yeah. launch trailer. I wasn't even aware that that was going to be like a significant plot. Yeah. They are, they are very, very significant yeah. in the, in the main story as well. So all I don't in know. All, I, I think it's, it's everything that it set out to be. I do wish that they would have found some way to advance things in seven years. Um, imagine like they did Zach, the uh, building just because I know you don't like it, but I think think it's going to be good. I think, I don't know. I think you guys have talked, are talking from experience. So you, maybe your expectations are either too high or too low. I think that it's going to, um, for me be interesting and very enjoyable, uh, as a first time goer. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just cause it's new to me, but still, uh, I think it'll be all right. Uh, I will say, uh, every time, every time that I'm not playing the game, I, I'm just thinking about playing it. They did it, but they're doing it. Tell them to do it outside. Yeah, tell them that it's fine. Tell them busy. Ugh. Sorry, some no pest problem. control guy came to my house just now. Got there, man. Fallout can hey, pest control. You, hey, <laughs> if, you, if you don't take care of that, they could turn into giant rat roaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, you're right. Uh, they don't be in trouble. <laughs> um, Gabby, let's talk a little Battlefront. Let's let's talk a little. About... You've played you've played a heck of a lot more than a little. You opened up a second EA Access account just so you could get another ten hours. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is everyone not doing that? Not no. not me. <laughs> he needs that twenty hours, man. You're a crazy yeah. person. I don't know how you fit so many like your days down in Texas. They must have some special system where you have like forty hour days or something. Nah, I got the <laughs> same. I got the same hours in the day you do. I just you, you just know, fit, I, I'm much dumber so about much how I use in. them. Oh, it's yeah. dumber. How, how dumb is Battlefront? It, it, it's not dumb. It's uh, it's good. It, it's really good. <laughs> it's just there's not a lot of it there. Yeah, there's not a lot of it there. Have you played much of that, JD? Um, I played the older ones back in the day, and I have played the newest one. But my whole thing is like I can't remember the old ones. Was there a story mode in the old one? No. Yes, yes, there was. No, there wasn't. In, yeah, there was in, Battle, in Battlefront One, there was no, was there wasn't. That? No, hold on, let me show. Hold, let me check. Keep going. I just remember playing as like a a Boba Fett character, I think, at one point, um, in one of the older ones, if not a stormtrooper. And I thought like, you know, competitive or whatever. I guess uh, competitive Star Wars was cool, but it didn't really hold me like too well. It didn't grab me that much. I mean, I don't know something about Star Wars. I, I mean, I like Star Wars, but uh. Something about it, like, I feel like reminds me of more of being like a kid. So when I see, like, the pew pew lasers being shot out, I'm never really that impressed. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Stormtroopers uh, and stuff. And I think I like the lightsaber stuff the most, honestly. So for that to be a first person game, or, you know, first person, it's pretty much a first person shooter now, right? I guess mm-hmm. that's just. Well, you could play the whole thing in third person if you want. Oh, really? Well, that's cool. I don't know. I feel like if it, if that's all it is, then I feel like it's just a. Uh, you know, it's it, like it, it's it, it, it's multiplayer Star Wars for yeah, however many hours you want to play with friends. That's exactly what it is. And Zachary, yes, there was like single player in the old ones. No, there yeah. wasn't. I'm looking at it like with actual levels and bosses. In I don't know about bosses, but yes, there's a level here. Are yes. You, are you sure it's not just like oh, defeat forty enemies like we have in in this game? I don't think so. I mean, not based off what I'm looking at, but whatever. Mm. It, it, it's it's called a campaign. I don't know. Well, well people, regardless, I, tell me about. I, ne- I never, I never played the older one, so people that are smarter than me about that can, can go ahead and let us know in the comments. But I'll, I'll say this: like this game n- nails the Star Wars feeling, like from yeah. the music to to the gameplay, um, to, like everything, the the visuals, like it, it's Star Wars. The whole thing is Star Wars, except the voice acting. When whenever uh, Han uh, says all oh, the things I do for you, princess, it really sounds nothing like Han, <laughs> <laughs> but. Other than that, like they nail the feeling. So like, the way the way I put it, right, is if you have a group of friends that you just like jumping on with and playing multiplayer, like on a, on a daily basis and just talking, having fun, then that's how you hang out with your friends. 
I think this is good for that. Like it, it's super good, mindless fun. I think but, it's I think I think it's really quality. I think most surprising to me is how good it looks. Like it looks really really pretty. Um my standout moment is that Endor map. I think that's the best jungle map I've ever played. It's exactly what I wanted Destiny to be when they talked about initially having like jungles and, and very You're talking about you're talking about the bigger version, not not the one that's the hero battles, right? Yes. Cuz the, yeah. the hero battle one is actually quite small. Yeah, I'm but just the fact that you can like run up through the trees and go through the bushes and like everything is accessible. There's no laning or anything like that. You can kind of run and hide and and do whatever you want. Uh, it definitely is a more casual shooter. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's good that it separates itself from like Call of Duty, uh, but at the same time I wonder how how long of legs it'll have. I I agree with you though, Gabe. Like the time I've played has been super fun and I think being the heroes is the highlight, and I wish that they would have expanded that into a single-player mode because all of that is so fun. It looks so good. It controls really well. The levels are pretty awesome. Why didn't they just give us some actual campaign content? Because they say there's a single-player, and there's some, like, quote, missions, but we were talking before we started recording, like, you play those once and you're done. That's, like, five minutes of fun. Yeah, but, but... there's not a lot of variation to them. There's there's two options. You can do the wave-based one, and or you can do the... The hero battle one, where, where you're a hero the whole time, and you're basically just trying to get more points on the opposite side. So, I mean, it, it's cool. It's just, you know, how how much of this are you going to play over and over is my only thing. Uh, yeah. J, JD, do you, th- do you think that this is a game that maybe you could find yourself? I could play it. I feel like it's a game that definitely looks like it deserves a campaign, just from how pretty it is. Um, and, I don't know, even if it, like... Let's say how do you how do you how do you say it? Like you know how multiplayer games are. Uh even if they did like a multiplayer storyline type of thing where the beginning of the or I don't know, it would be like something where like the beginning of the level gives you some sort of goal to reach and maybe you reach it through waves of battling, but you still get some sort of cinematic like storyline to it or like, I don't know, you could, like, start... Or maybe it could take, like, the best moments of all the Star Wars movies type of things. Um, and then just, like, give you, like, oh, here's a mission from movie four. Here's a mission Cause, from Because all the systems are there. You five. got, like, the shooting. Yeah. You got the heroes. You got the, like, Millennium Falcon flying. You have the speeder uh, bike chase scene. Like, it's all there. It just feels like, what? How hard would it have been to just compile that in, like, even, like, a four-hour campaign or something? Yeah. I feel nah. like that's what it deserves. But I don't know. It's, it's probably just a lot of multiplayer fun. But I don't know. I feel like like when I was younger, I feel like multiplayer was like all the rage. And then like as I get older now that I know that like my friends don't have the time to do multiplayer like they used to. It's like, oh, well, I kind of want to just be like, uh, you know, involved in the story for however long and try to get it, uh, you know, get it done and enjoy it and then be like, oh, that was a good game. But nowadays, you know, I feel like the, you know, the the big corporate companies are all like, they, we got to get them more throwing knives and more, uh, you know, more RPGs for these kids, you know? So, they're, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe being pulled away unless the franchise is dedicated to story-based, uh, I guess, content. For sure, for sure. And, then, I mean, this does feed the fans exactly what they're, they're hungry for. It is a, a perfect Star Wars game, like you said, Gabe. Like, it, it nails that so well. I think the wish is just there's more of it. And if anything, that's a compliment to the game because what is there is good. I think there's quite a bit of multiplayer, um, like, mode-wise and whatnot, and the hopes that they'll eventually add, you know, Kylo Ren and Finn and people like that as heroes uh, is pretty cool and could be cool. But to me, like, you look at, regardless of how much fun it is, you look at, like, the Black Ops 3 package and then you look at the Battlefront package and it's, it's crazy that they're both $60. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, there's no way they're they're gonna sell this game for less than sixty though. Well, so. I, no, I understand that, but just from like a straight up package standpoint, it it, it does yeah. make you kind of really appreciate like how much Treyarch just like stuffed yeah. into Black Ops Three. But I, I, I think, mean, I, go ahead. I was gonna say Battlefront. I, I think it makes an amazing first impression. I just don't know. I'll be interested to see come like you know, December, January, February, what the player counts are like for this compared to, like, Halo 5 and Black Ops 3. I think it'll be high just because it's Star Wars. But I am worried that it, I'm worried that it'll go the way, it, like, evolve. Like, you know, a game like that can only hold your attention for so long because, you know, you're doing the same stuff all the time. 
And so, the skill ceiling doesn't seem to be anywhere near as high as some of the some of its competitors. You know, like yeah, deaths and and kills in that game come at a much more. I don't know if random is the right word, but it's not random because you can do. I mean, there's matches where like I do very well. Oh, well, for like, sure, but it, it has a a more lighthearted feel to to the matches as opposed to Black Ops, which feels like hyper twitch and hyper skill and hyper experience yeah. driven. It's really good, though. I, I don't want to sound like we're down on it. I yeah. think it's really good. I, I, it makes me more excited for the visceral um, Star Wars game yeah. that's coming. So I, I want I'll, I want a single-player Star Wars game, and it's coming. We know that for, for, for a fact. So hopefully that's just single-player only, just like this is multiplayer only. Yeah. Gabe, do you have anything else you want to say about Star Wars, or you want to go to Tomb Raider for a little no, bit? No, I would love to move on to uh, Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good on Star Wars. I mean... Other than the mo- the new movie coming out, that's the that's probably the yeah. <laughs> the only thing that Battlefront is doing is making me more hype the fact that there's a new movie coming out. Yeah, and that's really it. I don't know. It's pretty. That's all it is. It's a pretty shooting game that I don't think I don't think its lifespan will be long because I don't think I don't think the demographic is there. Like I feel like I feel like that's a game for nostalgia people who have played all the other battlefronts. I don't see kids getting star Wars battlefront like that. Um, even maybe teenagers. I could see that. Cause I feel like teenagers didn't really see star Wars like that. Like when's the last star Wars for a teenager, like a 17 year old, like 10 years ago. The only thing it has going years? for it is like, if you do see the movie or you're hyped for the movie, this is your only option to play a game. There's no like, Oh, yeah. like the episode yeah. seven game or something like that. Like, I, I mean, I, I still I, it'll sell just because it's Star Wars, and right now, like, um, yeah, the world is just in Star Wars frenzy, and there's no getting away from it. Like, they're shower yeah. heads for, for 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 the love of God. They're shower heads. So if they're selling shower heads to people, they can sell a video game. Yeah, they'll sell it. It'll get out a little bit, but I don't know. Um, I just I don't see like a younger demographic getting into it. I see like the people who have played all the other ones getting into it, and maybe a casual gamer who needs something else to play. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it went very much the way of Titanfall. Like first blush is like, wow, this is really awesome and cool, and then a few months later, people are I like, I think they would Titanfall love it if it what? Did what Titanfall did. Oh, for sure, they would from a sales <laughs> standpoint. But yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. It's fun, and I guess ultimately that's yeah. that's what counts. Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's fun. That's very that, fun. That is also fun. And to me, it's yeah. it's the most polished game we've discussed yet. I think it's really cool. I I have it. I'm only uh I've only played like the I want to say the first legitimate level. Okay. I guess. I don't know, you can't really call them levels because it just like follows yeah. her storyline, but I've like, you know, I've i I've gotten at least twenty probably forty five minutes into the game or an hour, and I think so far it's like it's just fun, you know, like I played the last one, I beat that one. I don't I think that might be the first Tomb Raider I really beat cuz back in the day on like PlayStation when I played <laughs> Tomb Raider, the only reason I played Tomb Raider was like I enjoyed the practice mode when you went to her like mansion and you could swan dive off the banisters. For yeah. some reason that w- that was like the most fun to me. I was like, yo, wa-, I was like, yo, watch this girl jump off the banisters, yo, and then she would like fall and hurt herself and I didn't think the hurting herself part was fun. I just thought like it was dope the way she like swan dive with guns. I was yeah. like, yeah. Well, she definitely so, hurts herself a lot in this game. Uh, yeah, <laughs> over and over and over why, again. Yeah, I think that's why I like this whole franchise because like, <laughs> it I, hurt, like it, who, it hurts her a lot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> who who made who was making the game before Square Enix stepped in? Well, it's all, uh, it's it's still Crystal Dynamics. Like, okay, it's been them for a long time. Yeah, but they I feel like they took what was like. A flashy, like, 1990s type of character that was very stereotypical 90s and flushed it out a lot more now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's different people. I don't think it's the exact same people. I mean, it's the same company for the most part. Yeah, yeah. It's- she's just more human. Well, she's not really too he- She, I mean, the things, the physical <laughs> attributes of her are ridiculous, but, I mean, I feel like she's more human in this franchise than she was back in the day when freaking i don't know uh what's her name was playing her in the tomb raider angelina movie jolie yeah yeah angelina jolie yeah i feel like that was like you know that's like i mean it's fun fantasy cool stuff not that she can't do it she's strong she's independent <laughs> she could do what she want to do but, <laughs> um yeah no the newer ones i like that the first i like that the re i guess the remake of it 
brought her into becoming the Tomb Raider, and then this one is like her really taking that name. Yeah, and to me, like the pacing of this game is perfect. There is never a a moment where you're pulled out. Like if you're not doing some crazy chase scene, then you're killing a bunch of guys. And if you're not doing that, then you're completing side quests and hunting and upgrading Lara. If you're not doing that, you're finding a, a challenge tomb and going through a, you know, 10 minute puzzle segment. Like it literally is nonstop from start to where I've played. Um, and I like the, the story stuff. I think it's, it's fun to have all these awesome multiplayer games and experiential games like fallout and, and whatnot. And then to have a sort of gamers game tried and true, like tomb Raider, you know, single player, so, linear. Someone say, yeah. someone say that Fallout. I is know a gamer's Fallout Four game. is a gamer's game, but I'm talking like <laughs> the people that like grew up liking like single player, linear, big set pieces. You know, engaging stories, cool characters. Like, it's a minor spoiler, but I, I'll say it in a way that doesn't. That prison sequence. You know, in the first few hours there, like yeah. the reveals that happen yeah. in the cutscene, that, like that's just... I, I, saw, I saw that one coming. It, but it's top tier game design, I feel like. The way it's integrated into the story, the way that you, you know, gameplay mechanically escape and, and like they're constantly feeding you new new abilities, new weapons, uh, new ways to interact with the world. And, uh, you know, Gabe, you're going to hate me for saying it, but I love that Forbes article that said Rise of the Tomb Raider is the best Uncharted game ever made. <laughs> I, I don't even defend her. Like you got the wrong person here. I don't care. I know, but you just don't like when I say anything that you know people are going to get upset about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but but I don't know. I, I, this game does a, a lot of like fantastic stuff. I just wish it would like not be so formulaic. Because even the way that you, that you ex- uh, escape that princess, uh, princess, you don't escape a princess. Escape the princess. Uh, <laughs> when you escape the prison, you know the way that you do it. It's it's formulaic. I've done that in many games. You know that. Yeah, but that. what are you supposed to do? Like cut a yeah, hole in the ceiling and fly yeah, out? No, I, I, yeah, I know. But you know, just like the way you say certain things about other games, not necessarily changing a lot. You know, it there's a, there's a lot of things that are you know tried and true. You know, action game staple. Then they're here, like absolutely. But it, it does yeah. it. They do them very well. The game is beautiful. The set pieces are, are crazy. It's, I think it's, it, super, it's up there. It's, it's super, up there with Uncharted. It's absolutely up there. It's super polished and just how everything is integrated, uh, like back into another system. So you go and you're hunting for these these items and these pieces and resources, and then that allows you to upgrade your character, which then allows you to access new areas, which then allows you to go into a new challenge tomb, which then gives you a new item, and like that loop and that sort of rewarding you for whatever you do you get xp for pretty much everything so yeah there's reasons beyond checking a collectibles list you know to go and hunt out all these extra pieces and to up your language skill and all that i love that i can spend time hunting collectibles and then have that directly impact my gameplay experience as opposed to most games when you're going for 100 it's like i remember assassin's creed 2 one of the only games i ever got a thousand gamer score on collecting like those feathers like there's there's zero no point, point to it besides yeah, no collecting point. the feathers, but here every little thing really just enhances your gameplay and, and gives you a, a larger arsenal, a better Lara. Um, and it's something that we talked to uh, the game director Brian Horton on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and, and like he really spoke to so many options, so many f- so much flexibility within the linear structure, and, and I really feel that in the in those hub worlds especially, and in your campfire. Uh, they end you're, up being pa- like you're past the first hub world, right? Yes. The, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But how, but how many more have you got to? One. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, so you're still early. I'm still. I played again, similar to Fallout, like six, seven hours of it. I'm almost done with with Rise of the Tomb Raider. It, it, it's really good. I, I, it's hard for me to talk about these things without spoiling it. I know. <laughs> I mean, because to me, it's Don't not you. Spoil it. No, I'm, just I, I'm not, I'm not going good. to. This one, I'm really not going to spoil it because I, I, I think. Um, you know, people haven't even started this because of Fallout. I, yeah. With Fallout, I felt a little bit better just talking about it because I think everybody's played the first few hours of Fallout. This one came out on the same day. It had the the, the bad luck of that. And, yeah, uh, they tried to say, like, Phil Spencer's like, oh, we know it can go head-to-head, or maybe it was Aaron Greenberg. And, like, yeah, that was pretty disingenuous. Like, the the YouTube views prove it. The the hype around the game prove it. And, and it reviewed better than Fallout. Like, Metacritic wise, yeah. it sits a point. I above. mean, I I had Fallout and uh, Tomb Raider the day they came out, but in my head, I was like, everybody's uploading Fallout today, so I'm about to be a rebel. Tomb Raider, good for you. Uh, How that? Honestly, everybody's think, watching Fallout. <laughs> yeah, 
I was like, watch something different, kids. Yeah. I got it for you. I, so. <laughs> I love that it feels good. Like, you know I'm a big mechanics and, and sort of like hands on the controller guy. And like just the act of that you have to hit X when you hook in her uh, her picks into the wall as opposed to just jumping up and having them auto hook. It just adds yeah. it adds like a a real it, it, it makes you feel emerge. Uh, it's so much more immersive. The fact that you have to interact with the world in, in such a Tomb Raider way. I don't know. Like, I feel like yeah, I'm it, part of it. My it puts you in a, it puts you in the moment, especially like when you, gr you, dr you th uh, hurl yourself to a ledge and you make it, but then X is like, you better tap it right. or you might drop, right. you might fall. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, why would I fall? We made it already. But then it's like, I'm just making sure, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It kind of keeps you on your toes. And I like they, how flexible she is, how, like, action-driven she is. Like, a as much as there are set pathways for you to climb these, you know, craggly rocks or whatnot, you also can kind of just ascend as you, as you, f you know, please. And you can go and just climb on roofs of buildings. Or you can make jumps that, you know, aren't the intended pathing you can climb trees and reach places through through different means and it, wait <laughs> wait till you get that hook that, that like spoilers you swing around spoilers that's not a spoiler kidding. you get a weapon you get a hook she can, swing she around can climb trees spoilers she she really just feels very much like a it's like i don't know i feel like uncharted is very canned in the way that drake moves maybe it won't be in four but here i yeah. love the fact that yeah it it's ooh, we have a, a live mewtwo Hatching. Sorry, <laughs> a wild Mewtwo Mew appears. A wild Mewtwo, a wild Mewtwo approaches. Um, no, I was I was agreeing with the Uncharted thing. Uh, I beat Uncharted three. I heard Uncharted two is the best story, mm -hmm. and then I'm playing Uncharted one for fun because I have the Uncharted collection. There's way too many bad guys in Uncharted one. It's obnoxious. Um, <laughs> and and then two I heard is good. Three and I, I beat, so I, I don't know if I'll play that one. But yeah, sorry, I'll let you continue. I think that Nathan Drake does move fairly mechanically though he's super like a robot yeah. when he flies and does certain things lara's just all nimble she's been doing that pilates yeah all over all over her croft man she's the og though tomb raider was before nathan drake shoo i think right yeah absolutely yeah, <laughs> absolutely. yeah like by like by like 10 years at least yeah at and least i, I do <laughs> like that they... and all nathan all nathan drake is is indiana jones yeah. for kit for the video games console i mean we acting like that's not what it is he's got that shirt tuck though the half yeah. tuck uh, classic. <laughs> I, I do like that they use the mature rating. I think that's that's cool, and I, I think it allows them to explore some concepts and, and just flesh out the lore. Like, I don't know about you, Gabe, but I love that there's all those audio logs and all the yeah. little, like, bits that kind of make the story, again, feel much more immersive and much more like, wow, this is a massive game and still linear. Like, that's what I really appreciate, that it feels like a a huge experience within... I don't know, it's huge. It's... Well, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying it, that I'm not saying that the game world is huge. I'm saying that the the my my playtime with it feels like this is a a massive epic game, and yet it's still being guided with the artistry of the designers, and that's something I feel like we don't get. Fallout requires you to be the designer for for most of that game, and here it's not. I don't know. Action. If it, I don't know if it requires you to be the designer. Well, you have to pick the order of the one, quest. You have to. Yeah, one of them. I don't, I don't think that's yeah. designed though. One's more linear than the other. That's all. Tomb Raider has a purpose. You need to help her get to her goal. And Fallout is you can get to your goal when you want, <laughs> or you can go do some other goals right now because yeah. you got time. Yeah, I mean, got, they're, they're very yeah. different games. So I don't know. I, I, I love Tomb Raider. Um, I'm almost done with it. I can't wait to finish it. Um, I'm scared that I might not like the ending just because, I don't. for some reason, all these um uncharted is included here i don't know why they love sticking supernatural stuff in here yeah like it's yeah a, it's, it's a thing they like doing like, it's a weird I, addiction i think i think it, ha it i think it makes up for all the ridiculous uh uh upper upper body strength <laughs> that the main characters have yeah because there is no way that not even not not even not nathan drake not laura you are not doing muscle ups <laughs> To a clip. Oh shit! Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're not. See that? <laughs> you're that not. was my strength just sure. now. <laughs> well, that was crazy. But yeah, I guess I hit the cord. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you're not doing. You're not going from this cliff to a cliff that's six feet above you <laughs> by this. <laughs> ah, like that shit is. That's so hard to do. Like pull-ups are hard for me. You're not doing that, Lara. Don't make me feel inferior. What the hell, <laughs> Gabe. As you approach the end, uh, is the environmental variety does it does it maintain its sort of like 
change of pace throughout or is it kind of it it changes plenty cool that's awesome i love that like i love that you start off climbing the icy cliffs and then instantly go to like scorching hot syria and then you're back to siberia yeah, it keeps changing. I, it's it's reviewing super well. Everybody that plays it seems to love it. It's totally overshadowed by Fallout, but nonetheless, like kudos they to them for making pu- a great they game. Should have pushed it back till next year. No, like, they should have just released nah, it. Nah, like, that's too far. Well, or, or put it out earlier. They Don't could, drop they it could, the same they day. They could have put it out. They could have put it out in October. I think the other one came out in October, didn't it? Yeah. Or was it a November game? Like every game. I, I, I don't know, but I. Who cares well, it, it, when the other one can just put it out when Fallout isn't around? That's yeah. it. Yeah, or even yeah, they literally could they could have put it out next week and it probably would have gotten yeah. a little bit more. If not, if not the week before, well, it came out the week before Call, call of, Duty. of Duty. Yeah, I put but that out, came out put, on a Friday. Yeah, put it out the week of Call of Duty. I think that was a much better call. I don't know why they didn't do that. Yeah, I thought it was weird they would do the day Fallout drop, but maybe I think maybe they had a schedule and they couldn't change it. I'm really concerned about sales because Square Enix wasn't happy with whatever the initial burst for the first was four or this. five million, and <laughs> and this game deserves to sell like uh, a, it, it a will boatload. on the next go around. It, it's coming to PC at the at the, uh, the beginning of next year and then uh, fall for PS4. I, I think the game will sell over time, but. The, oh yeah it, you know I forgot it's only on xbox yeah right now it's only on xbox so you know the, that could also hurt it yeah the numbers aren't gonna be there there's no way but you know no. if, if it's a good pc port people will buy that um and, and playstation 4 being the predominant console right now i think it'll it'll have a good fan base there and, and i hope microsoft uses some of their holiday money to like around black friday really make a push for lara because yeah maybe they get her like a console bundle thing do something, but they gave they get they already did that with Fallout. There's a Fallout console bundle. Like, oh, yeah. Fallout, we get it. Yeah. It's great. Fallout, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Fallout Four and Tomb Raider make me super excited for Horizon next year because I feel like Horizon is the fusion of Rise of the Tomb Raider and Fallout Four. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh yeah, uh, the robot yeah, Dino bow one. and arrow game yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh and, and, no no that's Heavenly Sword Two. That's what I call yeah. it. <laughs> I hope it's not Heavenly Sword too. Um, I just, Dude, it looks like it. It looks like H. It looks like uh, future Heavenly Sword. Um, right before we move off of, of Tomb Raider, I just wanted to give a shout out to the tombs this time because they're really creative. I like are. them, man. They're yeah, cool and, so and far. And there's a good number of them. So people complain that there wasn't a lot of them last time. There's plenty of them now. So uh, it, it's a good time. Zachary, I, move I, us along. I will, but I just want to say one thing. Over the course of the 34 episodes we've done, we've constantly talked about Tomb Raider because that was like my most anticipated game. And we had this like good versus evil battle where I said it was going to be amazing and Max said it was going to be terrible and I just feel really vindicated that it turned out to be really, really good. And that's why he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not why he's not here, guys. <laughs> to the lightning round we go before we get ourselves in trouble. Uh, let's uh, let's move to your lightning rounds. Thank you guys for sending in a boatload of emails this week. We do appreciate it. You can keep those coming at uh, can't stop asking at gmail.com. Don't email can't stop playing at gmail.com. We had a very angry <laughs> random guy say, tell your fans to stop emailing me. This is my email. I own this email. It's like, holy crap. We weren't yeah. trying to. Go reviews on iTunes, though, guys. Rock the boat right. or anything like that. Um, reviews, on, reviews on iTunes and, and send more emails. Emails are fantastic. All right. So going to the lightning round for this week. Uh, we had someone send us email for the flash round, which I don't know. What's a flash round? The flash round is the alternate reality. Uh, can't stop playing lightning speaking, round. Speaking of alternate reality, <laughs> flash. Maybe they're just watching season two of the Flash so much, and they like the whole the whole Earth two thing that's going on over there, and, and they're bringing it into the podcast. I suppose. Barry so. Allen. <laughs> Sorry. You, you watch. You watch Flash. Yeah, I watch Flash. Oh, wow. Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Oh, Zoom was scary. Zoom so was very this is scary. a this is an interesting lightning round from uh, Spinning Mantis. Okay. Uh, and he says, uh, "This is a this is a themed lightning round with a, with a plot and everything. You are going to be trapped in a vault for twenty years after a nuclear holocaust, and you can only bring a few things with you. What do you bring?" So the first category is game system: PC, Xbox One, or PS4. PC. How is that even a question? Why is Nintendo not yeah. involved? What, huh? what is this about? Huh? I'll, bring, I'll bring a PC and emulate Nintendo's. <laughs> okay. huh? All right. Uh, I don't know. I'd bring my PC probably because it does everything all my all my other consoles do right now and better. Okay, and you but, can watch movies. but how would you feel if for twenty years you can't play Zelda Wii U? 
God, that sucks. <laughs> you gotta wait twenty years to see yeah, what that old Zelda's like. First off, uh, it wasn't even on the list, so who cares? Okay. Yeah, fine, but if, but if I only have a Wii U, then I can't play anything else. Okay. So All no, right. I'll take the PC. All right, music files. You can take Drake's library, Kanye's library, or Lil Wayne's library. Why are those oh, the God. only options? I want none of those. I didn't make. Yeah. Th- I didn't make this. Little Wayne's library could go burn in a fire, <laughs> but uh, I guess if I gotta pick off the Kanye's, but I yeah, can't. I'll go Kanye. I don't know. I don't know how long I'd be able to hotline bling it. I think I me and Drake, he would just long. like soothe me to sleep perfectly. Uh, <laughs> give us, give, give us better music option, guys. Come on. All right, food. You can take soup, an endless supply of soup, like any flavor, <laughs> okay. any flavor of jerky, or any flavor of granola. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> These are all horrible options. Um. Soup, I, I would, guess. <laughs> I would do granola probably just because I feel like it would make me the healthiest yeah. and give me the um, the energy to possibly survive however long I'd be wherever I'm at and maybe make it out. Not if it's a real like hearty soup with like meats and vegetables and everything. Ooh, uh, that's right. You could get a lot of variety. But like soup every day though. <laughs> Think about granola that. Granola every day? <laughs> I'd rather do granolas every day than soup. Think about soup, man. You got to really think about soup. That's <laughs> all, all soup I think right about there. Is soup. <laughs> and then beef jerky, you'll just die eventually, I assume. Yeah, uh, jerky is <laughs> the last option. All right, now things are getting even more serious. Bathroom product, you can bring either toothpaste, soap, or hair gel. I'm bringing soap. <laughs> Your teeth are going to rot. Toothpaste, soap, or hair gel. I mean, hair gel really only applies to me, I guess. Uh, uh I, I guess. I was about to say toothpaste, but not nah, soap, because you, I mean, yes, I, isn't it? There's like, I say soap, because I feel like you can clean your teeth with other stuff. You can clean yeah. your teeth with the soap. Yeah, I mean, it might not uh. taste great, but hey, it, it'll be clean. Oh, God. All right, next up is you can bring a famous person, and his choices are very interesting again, so just roll with it. Taylor Swift, Jennifer Lawrence, or Margot Robbie? I need uh, who's Margot Robbie. I don't know who uh, that is. Ha- she's Harley. playing Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad movie. Oh, I probably bring her. Yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards. I'll bring Taylor Swift because she's my birthday buddy. I feel like she'd get annoying really fast. <laughs> <laughs> what if she just like doesn't want to talk to you? She goes right to song about you in the corner or something. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and then the last one, uh, continuing to get more and more interesting. Uh, one item of clothing. You can bring <laughs> shoes, hat, or accessories. Wait, do I what? still have clothes? Or are what you- are accessories? You already have- wristbands. <laughs> you already have a hat. I mean, you already have your clothes. But Gabe, like, I think he included the hat for you and the shoes for me, since those matter the most to us. I mean, I would still need to wear shoes. I think. I'd say shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's, yeah, shoes. Yeah, shoes yeah, it is. Shoes. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, or I, socks. What about no. socks? You know what? Give me the, give me the hat. Give me the hat. Because I'm in this shelter. Like, the, how dirty could the floor possibly get? <laughs> and over 20 years, it's probably going to get really dirty. I'll clean it. <laughs> it's already really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, so now we can move to actual emails. That was pretty yeah. good. Thank you, Spinning Wait, that, that's, all, that's the only lightning round we have? That's the, well, we have a flash round, but I don't even feel like I should acknowledge that. Wait, are they good, though? Yeah, I'll pull it up. Flash round. Sorry. I, I I mean, I just feel like we should have one more of those. That one was fun. That, that was really good. I like the fact that we had like a plot and like a storyline to it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the flash round, nothing against you, Eric, but it's pretty simple. It's uh, um, Insomniac versus Naughty Dog. That's that's the extent of the flash round. Ne- never mind. Move on. <laughs> if you want to call it the flash round, how do you set it in a good question? No, that was really flashy. It was just like a flash in a pan. It was there one second and gone the next. No, we love um, you, Eric. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, whew. Um, all right. So emails, uh, this is a good one. This one comes in from James. James writes in and says, what's up guys? Today I have a question about sequels. If we lived in a world where develops developers never made sequels to their hit games, which sequel would you want to see most? Your options are last of us two, Bioshock four or half life three, but you only get one. Oh, this we is kind of like a lightning round, by the way. We, we talked, we talked about this. Not maybe like a week ago. I said, Hey, what did these companies just never made a sequel? Right. So he's going off your your theory, Gabe. Half Life, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I you know what I pick, so yeah. Bioshock yeah. Four, hands down. Wait, no, but he's in Bioshock Two. <laughs> no, he said Bioshock Four, Last of Us Two. <laughs> yeah, they're oh. releasing Bioshock Two again. Sorry. I'm saying, is that what you want? <laughs> no. I, I'll go with Half Life. Uh, I feel like Half Life is what like a lot of people would want. 
Yeah, I'm one of them. But uh, Bioshock, I feel like Bioshock Four is possible, and then Half Life, and then and isn't isn't Last of Us Two already happening? Yeah, yeah. Th- I, I also think we get a new Bioshock before we get a new Half Life. I, I think Half Life <laughs> is the 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 fuel that like Valve runs on. I think the the hope that that game eventually comes out is what they kind of just like operate their company structure based on. I don't think it ever no, releases. Oh, what not Steam? No, Steam is is like the coal for Steam is Half Life Three. The the thought nope. that the thought that Half Life Three is coming at one point. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Uh, this next email comes in from uh, Sam. Sam wants to know if any of us have played Overwatch and what our thoughts are on the fact that it was going to be free to play and now the Origin Edition costs sixty dollars. Uh, while it's it's the base game is forty, the Origin Edition is sixty, and you get a few bonuses. How do you feel about this game kind of flipping the script for Blizzard and going from free to play to uh, to paid? I don't care. Gabe I mean, doesn't long, care. I, I, I find myself at that's my answer to everything. Somebody says, "Oh, what do you think about this?" I'm like, I don't think about that. Like, I, great, great it, answer, Gabe. Thanks for being a part of the show. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it sucks that they, you know they went back on, on on you know it being free and now it's not free. I suppose it sucks, but you know a lot of people seem to really like it. I haven't played it. Zach's played it a long time ago, so that doesn't count. Okay. Because it was all right. Like, I guess I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> nah, don't talk about it. Uh, no, definitely don't talk about it because you can talk shit. All right. Um, a lot of people are loving it though. I don't that know. is true. It is the uh, hype think... over on Twitch. Um, I don't know. I I think it's we well, got a great thing like that. Why not sell it? Especially since they're looking to push it on consoles. Uh, it, it kind of only makes sense. And I think it'd be really weird to make it pay on consoles and free to play on PC. That would get super awkward super quickly. Um, Gabe, we had a great email. The subject line was "Help me break out of school." <laughs> which sounded like he was trapped in school. Oh, I, I did that because I because I mentioned it that one week. I thought right? that would I thought it was going to turn out to be some like super stealthy spy type email, but it it ends up being about he uh, he says he just he just moved to the most generic high school in America. Everybody wears the same thing since it's a small town. Everyone knows each other. I just came from a huge city, and it's a really hard transition for me. You got any tips or ideas for how I can stand out in this very generic place? To wear your wear your shirt and your pants backwards. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, do the kid in play. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for or what? My bad. Do the uh, crisscross. crisscross. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recommend that you shop online. Then you can get stuff that nobody has. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on how much money you got. Not not all is gonna go good. For you. Okay. Like every every Jordan out there. Well, not everything, but just find find a unique brand. Or ultimately, like, don't worry about it. Worry about yourself. Who cares if they all wear the same thing? You want to stand out? Start making YouTube videos. Take your vlog camera everywhere <laughs> with you. Film that shit. Be in front of everybody. Be like, yo, I'm just walking to class. Have people call you a weirdo as you walk to class. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, be a, the be the future. Great way. Zachary. What? All right. I need you to tell me your opinion on this trade, which I know is a stupid trade. but Is this a fantasy football interjection? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So... Somebody wants. For, I'm giving them Eddie Lacy, Odell, mm-hmm. Brian Tannehill, and D'Angelo Williams. Okay, you know, that's, all, that's a lot of players to remember. Yeah, F- for Jeremy Hill, Jay Ahai, I can't even say his last name. Yeah. Andrew Luck and Antonio Brown. That's a terrible trade. Don't do it. Moving Horrible. on. Horrible. Of course. Not. Okay. That's so dumb. Get the hell out of here. Joseph writes it in and says, uh, "Hey guys, going by Fallout special system of strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Which is your strongest in real life, and which is your worst?" Luck is my worst. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gabe. Yeah. Well, I think I think, chari- I think mine's charisma, but I haven't really had a chance to really build mine out. Yeah. Okay. And Zachary, me and you, since we know each other, we're gonna get. I'm gonna tell you yours, and you're gonna tell me mine. Okay. okay all right. What's what's my what's my <laughs> strongest <laughs> attribute, Gabe? Thanks. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say yours is charisma for sure. Okay. Char- so pick two: charisma and endurance, because of that walk. <laughs> Charisma and endurance. Gabe picks on me at, at conventions because he says I walk too fast. <laughs> you walk, you walk way too fast. You're pretty fast. I guess you, you're tall though, yeah, right? I, yeah. I'm just as tall as him. But, but I'm, Gabe, I'm like, you have to remember, I'm 75 percent legs. You're about 50 50. No, I'm like 80 percent stomach, and then okay. the rest is. <laughs> 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 no, but we're the same height, so I mean, close to the same height, so. I don't know. You just have a very wide step. My my steps aren't that wide. I would say my my best is intelligence or charisma and I, or luck. I I seem to have a lot of luck. You so do. Maybe I put Char- a lot yeah, of points. Char- charisma, luck, and, and and my worst is definitely strength. De- that punch though. 
<laughs> Gabe, what, what is your, your strongest? I would say, Gabe, I think your strongest is also charisma. Or endurance. Maybe. Your endurance. But not endurance like, like, oh, I got stamina, but endurance like you endure. No matter what happens, you, you keep a positive attitude. You have to. I have some stamina. I like that about you. N- n- not a lot of people my size can keep up with me. I'll say that. That, that is very <laughs> true. Um, we got an update from our good friend Luca. He was a 13-year-old boy who was telling us about he had way too many chores and wanted some ideas on how to like slim down his load and play more games. He's, he writes back to say that his chores have doubled since, since we responded <laughs> to his email. <laughs> How did that happen? We're so sorry. <laughs> Someone caught somebody caught him asking questions. <laughs> oh boy. Um, all right. This is a good email. This one comes in from the legendary YM. And uh, they say, first off, just want to thank you guys for always being so positive and encouraging. I've only been listening for a few episodes, but so far this is the best podcast that I subscribe to. Even when you have mixed feelings about something, you avoid being too negative and don't bash things unnecessarily just because they don't appeal to you. I feel like this email doesn't consider my some of my my rants but anyways uh their question is between uh the late 90s and 2010 there weren't very many big budget adventure games all of a sudden games like the walking dead life is strange tales from the borderlands have all uh, sparked a renewed interest in the genre i would like to know what type of game you guys would like to see revived in the next decade turn-based rpg and i know nobody agrees with this except me but i like them okay uh parappa the rapper three <laughs> there straight you go. up there you go. Rap games. The only game that needs to be made. So, so not what was that Def Jam game that came out a couple years ago? Def oh, Jam Rap that Rap could be, that too. Def if they Jam. make if they make Fight for New York two, that could be good. <laughs> Skip the third one they made for Xbox 360 and PlayStation. You, you, I, don't, I think could, it was only 360. Icon could, that was sh- trash. You, you could play as as Met the Man and DMX. That was a good time. <laughs> yeah, no, that I mean, I think yeah, I think you could beat both of them, Met the Man and DMX. No, wait. DMX was in it? No, yeah, he wasn't. yeah. I remember DMX specifically being in one. He of, was in I, the second one. He well, couldn't he, have been in the third one. I don't know which DMX was like a crackhead by then, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he he was definitely in one of them. I remember using him. Yeah, yeah. Red no, Man was in it. I would I would revive. Well, they're kind of doing it like ukulele, like the Happy Fun Collectathon platformer. That's not yeah, called Mario yeah. Banjo. So that's Zuzu. that's coming back luckily, which is great. Uh, Gabe, the next email is just for you. From uh, from Sammy, and Sammy says, Gabe, have you ever hidden anything in your beard? I once had a teacher with a long white beard, and in the middle of class, he pulled out a plastic fork. <laughs> what? <laughs> my beard isn't that long yet. Um, The only, like, weird thing I've ever done with my beard is braid it. Uh, once I had it, like, down here, I had a really long beard. Yeah. I, I, I braided it. Just, like, I, my, my, my little sister um, and her friend, they decided they wanted to braid my beard, so I let them braid my beard once. That was it. How that? That's funny. How'd that turn out? I don't know. It was annoying <laughs> to take I don't off. Know. It, it hurt, like, cause you know, to take it off, you gotta like pull a little bit. It, you know, beards are painful to have. Like, you rub it the wrong way, it, it hurts, man. Have uh, a sensitive beard. Our email of the week, the final email, comes in from uh, Roo from Australia. Uh, <laughs> it's kangaroo. No, <laughs> First name Kanga, last name. Thanks, Roo. thanks for being super stereotypical. Uh, we apologize, Rue. Um, it was funny. Uh, she just has a fun. He or she has a fun story about uh, life is strange. Which I just wanted to read. Um, catching up on the podcast, I've missed due to finals as I pack and clean out my dorm room. Wanted to write in to say that I just finished the final episode and the complete season of Life is Strange. Um, I love the game, especially since I found out about the game through your podcast around episode two. During the time, I was going through a very similar situation as one of the characters where I was being cyberbullied and harassed by the people at my college, making me feel not safe and depressed. If one game were to save my life, it was Life is Strange. It showed me that no matter what, there is always someone out there willing to listen. After watching that episode, I went to both my parents and the dorm advisors to get help on the issue, and since then, the bullying has stopped bothering me. Anyways, just want to say that this is one of my all-time favorite games as it tackles issues and situations in a tasteful and realistic way that I rarely see in games or even books or movies these days and has some of the best cast of characters uh, on the video game market, which I just thought was like a nice story like of, of games making a positive impact. And Life is Strange, first of all, it's getting a... Uh, season 2. A season 2. And second of all, getting a limited yeah. edition box product. And, and that, it really like... Gabe, I know you haven't played episode five yet, but holy cow, they tackle some really intense issues and do it in a way that is tasteful, uh, like the email mentions. And, and it doesn't, it could easily di- divert and sort of divulge into real sort of objectifying and, and suggestive and super gross ways, but they manage to make it super creepy and super intense without 
you know, going off the deep end, which I, I think they have to get a lot of kudos and respect for. Yeah, I, I want to get to episode five. It's just, you know, Fallout, Tomb Raider, Halo. Like, you know, there's a lot of games every week. Call of Duty we just had. So as soon as um, December comes, I think we'll have time. December is relatively late. I know we have Just Cause. Um, cool. I'm sure there's something yeah, else. Yeah, Just Cause 3. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's something else. That game is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for it, though. And that will wrap up emails again. Can't stop asking at gmail.com if you want to send in your thoughts. Maybe send us some of your favorite experiences with Fallout 4, Rise of the Tomb Raider, or Battlefront. Love to hear those and kind of compare notes next week uh, as we venture further into the Wasteland, the Snowland, and the Star Wars Land. Um, now, there, There's snow. There is snow. Now, uh, what I feel is going to be the hardest hype city of the, the year. Not at all. What the heck are we hyped for anymore? <laughs> Jessica Jones, man. <laughs> is that gonna Man, be good it's it, the reviews are all like they're astronomical okay everybody's loving it and jessica it, jones that's the the marvel show right yes i audi- i auditioned for that there's like oh, some yeah? black dude on the show yeah nice. i did that like last this time no not this time i did it like this past january to audition for some overdose character named maxwell i think i saw the guy who plays him it's some dude i saw in like a I think I saw him on an episode of Empire. Interesting. It was whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that show would be good. I like Marvel going to Netflix and getting gritty. It's pretty cool. Yeah, like I, I, I like Daredevil a lot, uh, and everybody that that's seen it because press has seen like all of the episodes already. There's everybody's saying that it's better than Daredevil. So if it can top that, it's better. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. And then uh, it's like even more like adult. Like it has like even more adult. I thought Daredevil was like pretty dark. They're saying this is like darker. Wow. So, so I can't cool. wait. Interesting. What about you, JD? What are you excited for now that all the, the big games have already busted out? I don't know. Gaming wise? No, or it, it could be anything. General? It could be life. Anything. If you're if you're anything? excited for dinner tonight, that's viable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um dinner does sound good, but You just had breakfast. <laughs> uh hey man. Hey man, I'm a grown boy, okay? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm excited for Star Wars, the movie. There I'm excited go. for Episode 7, and I'm excited for The Last Hunger Games, honestly. Me too. <laughs> there we go. I love I watched, those movies. I watched the first, um, is it two? I watched the first two, and then the third one was on my Hulu Plus. So I watched that. Me and my girlfriend watched that. And we were like, yo, that was hype. I want to see this fourth one now. I'm good after that. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. Mo- no, you know what? That's my thing for next this next year or going on future stuff. Movie hype. Uh, Hunger Games, Star Wars, Bat V, Su- Bat v Superman, uh, freaking X-Men Apocalypse, Daredevil. Or not Daredevil, excuse me. Deadpool. Deadpool. That was weird. Deadpool. Um, all those movies coming out next year. Is Civil mention- War next he- year? Yes. Yeah, Civil War. Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, Suicide Squad. There's like 20 movies next year. I'm yeah. hyped for those. How about how about Finding Nemo two and The Good Dinosaur? Finding Nemo two, <laughs> yes. Good Dinosaur. Ah, I feel like Pixar kind of like shitted that one out. They didn't really. I feel like they didn't try. I don't know. That's my that's my most anticipated movie, man. You're, yeah. You're, Do you know anything about it? Like it just it, came out of random. It's got a dinosaur. He's he's <laughs> he, he talks. No, I just But it like it it looks like one of those Pixar movies like that they made too fast, you know? Like when you see like Toy Story 3, you're like, "Oh, okay. They took time." But then when they're cranking out like I don't know, Inside Out and whatever and like whatever else, I don't I don't even know what else. What other there's a lot of Pixar movies that happened recently. The late the late the most recent ones like Brave and Inside Out. Yeah, not, Brave. Not feeling yeah. those. So my hope was that Good Dinosaur will turn Tangled? things around. I don't even think that's them. Tangled is Disney. Yeah. My, yeah. all right. So, well, I'll do the good dinosaur cast by myself on November twenty fifth. Well, uh, <laughs> that's that 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 the uh, that movie comes out on the twenty fifth, and then Creed, the uh, son of Apollo Creed, like Rocky. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. That looks okay. I was eh. Starring Michael I, I Jordan. <laughs> I like I, Michael B. Jordan is this this generation's. He's gonna be this generation's Denzel Washington. So. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just waiting for him to get that role that really like takes him above Launches, and beyond. So yeah. I could be like, called it, told y'all, told y'all he's going to be the next Denzel. So there you go. And my yeah. my hype city for this week is the holidays. 
they're coming. There you go. They're soon. I got a lot of stuff planned for, for the first time in forever. I have like all my my travels and who I'm going to be with, when and where, all preset. With Super. me the whole time. Yeah, me and Gabe are just going <laughs> to cuddle up with cookies and and storybooks and Santa yeah. hype. Yeah, Christmas hype. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, I'm actually going to Disney World for my birthday, uh, December, and then spending Christmas with my family. Disney World with my girlfriend. So, speaking of birthdays, I, I'm. <laughs> I got this email from celebritybirthdays.com. Ooh, Gabe, you made it big. <laughs> hey, I think hey, I got the same email. That's so dumb. Gabe, you made I wanna, it. You're I want to write back and say, I want to write back and say, you know, I'm not a celebrity, right? Also, I'm not giving you my birthday. They don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it says something like, "Oh, uh, our viewership has uh, indicated that they would like to know when your birthday is." <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the exact same one, and yeah. I've gotten it before. And I was like, "Yo, leave me alone!" And they were like, "You don't like birthdays?" And I'm like, "Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> they just want to make you famous, guys. I'm just, I'm just gonna write back and say, "Shut up!" <laughs> wow. Right? Just reply back with "Shut up," <laughs> yeah. or just reply back with "Uh, no, N O period." That's like the most disrespectful thing you can tell somebody. I, I might just you do know, that. I might just when do someone that. <laughs> yeah, when somebody asks you for something like a favor or anything, and you're just like. No. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes hearing that shit. It's rude. It's mean. <laughs> Here's it sucks. Zach. Zach, I'm going to read you the exact email. I am Laura Reese with Famous Birthdays. They okay. I got celebrity. the same email, man. Oh, <laughs> you too? Yeah. Oh, we're, look at us. We're just a whole bunch of celebrities. We're a whole bunch of famous people. <laughs> Aren't you guys lucky that you got to listen to three famous people talk for the last 90 minutes? Uh, next week, we'll have more Battlefront talk. Probably wrap up with Fallout 4 and Tomb Raider. I got some Mario Tennis and uh, Animal Crossing Amiibo festival about, action. Uh, we can talk about Xenoblade next Xenoblade? week. Xenoblade? All sorts nice. of, like, Wii U is taking over next week. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Out of nowhere. Um, They're taking over and one kind at a time. Man, <laughs> you, you can write our jingles for us. We're always desperate for music and jingles. And yeah. Yo, I got you, man. We need, we need you on every week. Thank you so much for joining us, by the way, J.D. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Pleasure, it was really fun. Pleasure to have you, and hopefully we can hang out soon when I'm out in the, the warmer better half of the country texas <laughs> not texas <laughs> you said warmer i thought that's what you meant uh, texas is is very warm uh, and things will hopefully still heat up as we move through the fall gaming season lots of good stuff let us know your experiences with what you've been playing can't stop asking at gmail.com thank you so much for watching don't forget to review the show on itunes if you haven't already uh, you can find us on youtube if you like beautiful celebrity faces and you can find us on itunes uh, soundcloud <laughs> and stitcher if you like beautiful celebrity voices Till next week guys and girls thank you once again for listening watching and being a part of our journey to podcast glory till next week we'll see you all later don't stop believing. bye you said journey so i had to say don't stop believing thanks gabe i can even 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 even